Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about the Great Commission and how to make disciples. Okay? This is something I asked the Lord for a long time. And I had to have a conversation with the Holy Spirit. And I said, Holy Spirit, how do you make a disciple? And this is what he told me. He said, just walk alongside someone in their journey with God. That's it. You pray for them. If they have scriptural questions, you answer them. Uh, there's accountability in that relationship. Um, just there, just you're you're a, you're their battle buddy, and you're in the trenches with them, and that's what uh, that's what Jesus did, and and he he also demonstrated by example what it was to live a godly life, and and how to demonstrate the power of God right to his disciples. I mean, he he got in there with them. He he didn't have an entourage of people protecting him. <laughs> he didn't. Uh, have his own separate quarters. I mean, he lived and uh, walked with Jesus. I mean, with the disciples everywhere they went together. So, right. but as I was, I had prepared some slides, actually had borrowed them from pastor and modified some of them. The Holy Spirit interrupted my, my teaching tonight to bring his teaching. So, <laughs> And, but it goes along with what I'm going to be talking about. So I want everybody to turn to John chapter 15, starting in verse 1. John chapter 15, starting in verse 1. And so I'm going to do my best to say what the Holy Spirit is saying. And I am going to read this out of the King James Version. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. That word husbandman means the tiller of the soil, the vine dresser. We'll get into that a little bit later. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit for without me, you can do nothing. If a man abides not in me, he is cast off as a branch and is withered. Can somebody uh, mute themselves? Okay. So again, I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And if a man abides not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and I and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you, you will and it shall be done unto you. Here is, is my father glorified that you bear much fruit so that you shall be my disciples. So Jesus said all of that to say this. If you want to be my disciple, which is what he's talking about here, right? You're going to have to learn to abide or remain in the vine. Now, I don't know if you, any of you know about how a, a vine grows, the grapevine grows. There's like this trunk, right? And then there's a vine, and the vine feeds the branches. It, it nourishes the branches. And as the branches are nourished, they bring forth fruit. And this is what Jesus is talking about. 
Now, of course, a lot of us don't haven't grown grown up around vineyards, so this may not make a lot of sense to us, especially if we're not from uh, agricultural society. <laughs> you know, we're more of like technology society, right? But what he's saying is, you have to remain in a place in God's presence where you're nourished so you can bring forth fruit. A lot of us want to bring forth fruit, but we're not, we, we can't bear fruit out of a, a place out of our own flesh or works. We have to do that out of a place of being in the presence of God, being nourished by his presence. And we are going to replicate the kind of disciple that we are. So if we're a person that spends time in the presence, you're going to replicate people who, out of the place of the presence of God, will make more disciples. And Jesus is telling us that's the way to do it. He's saying if you want to make disciples and you want to bear fruit, which is from the very beginning, his, his mandate to Adam and Eve was, was uh, be fruitful and multiply. So from the very beginning, that was God's plan. Be fruitful, multiply. But Jesus is saying in order to do that, in order to bring forth fruit, you have to remain in the vine. You have to remain in his presence. He says here in verse 2, and I'm going to go over it to every branch that bears fruit, he purges it. Maybe you are bearing fruit. What? What? But I want to tell you something. Even if you you feel you're doing well in your life with Christ, the Lord is going to purge you. Expect that in your walk with God. And what purging is, is a cutting away of things that are not pleasing to him. So if the Lord has you in that place where he's cutting away things, he's pointing things out. Don't get distressed about it. It's part of the process of bearing more fruit. He's going to remove things and even people in your life who are keeping you from remaining in the presence of God. Okay? Now, some of you might be like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can make a disciple. I really don't know. Maybe you don't feel like your life is cleaned up enough, but look what Jesus says in verse three. Now you are clean through the word which I've spoken unto you. God washes us by his word. We're washed by the word of God. And we have to be in his word if we're going to be uh, washed, if we're going to be clean, okay? Now, you and I would not go visit a family member or go somewhere special without washing up first, right? Right? So if we're going to be making disciples, we got to be washed up. We got to be in his word. We got to be in his presence. You have to be, to be a balanced disciple. You have to learn to be in the word and get washed and be in his presence, which is what remaining in the vine is, abiding in the vine. We hear that all the time. Okay, it says here, that you cannot bear fruit on your own. You can't. The fruit in our life is a direct result of being nourished by that relationship. That nourishment comes from abiding or remaining in the presence of God. It should be an overflow of your relationship. Making disciples... Um, you know, preaching the gospel should, should be an overflow of being in the presence of the Lord. Okay. He's saying in verse five, without me, you can do nothing. Now we can go out there and we can get some things done, but where the real power and demonstration of the spirit is going to be out of the overflow of being in the presence of God, of being in presence of Holy Spirit. 
That's what it's going to be. What does it say here in verse 6? If a man does not abide in me, he's cast out as a branch and is withered. I'm telling you, if you want to be a dry branch, just stay out of the presence. Start doing worldly things. Watch the TV for hours and hours. Um, don't spend any time in prayer. Don't spend any time in the word. Don't spend any time in the worship. You're going to wither up. You don't want that. Because the Bible says that you can get so withered up, you can get thrown into the fire to be burned. We don't want that. That's backsliding. That's apostasy. Getting away from God is apostasy. And it says here, he promises, you know, here's a promise in verse 7. If you remain in me and my words, God's word remains in you. Ask whatever you want and it shall be done for you. If your life is full of the word and his words are in you, guess what? Jesus said, whatever you ask shall be done for you because you have faith in his word. Verse 8, here is my father glorified that you bear much fruit so you shall be my disciples. That's how we know. You know a disciple by the love. It says in, in John 13, 35, this is, these are indicators of being a disciple. It says in John 13, 35, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. So that's how we know. Because of the love you walk in. It doesn't say everyone will know you're a disciple because you really know the word of God. Oh, how much... They'll know your disciples by how much church going you do. Oh, they'll know you're a disciple by all the works you do. No, it says you will be known as a disciple by the love you walk in. And some, it's not what um, is taught, it's what's caught. You got to be careful. Like we've been talking about the last few weeks about being deceived, who we taught, mixture, all these things who we sit under because if you you sit under somebody who is very proud you'll become proud if you sit under somebody who's very judgmental you'll become judgmental and we don't want that we want to abide in the vine or remain in him and god is love so as disciples we need to become love our objective is to become like him and reproduce him in our life, in the lives of other people. So that was, that's, the, that's what it is, is, is becoming like Jesus. It's not trying to get to heaven real soon. And it's, let, let's escape out of here and I'm out of here and forget this world, it can burn. No, because that's a selfish. We're here to make disciples, to become disciples and make disciples. And so now I'm going to start sharing the slides that Pastor shared with us. Hold on, let me see if I can get these on here. Um, here we go. Share this. I'm going to start from the beginning here. From the beginning. Okay. Can y'all see that? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, so everything began and ended in Galilee, okay? Jesus began his ministry in Galilee and ended his ministry in Galilee. So what was Jesus' focus after his resurrection? We just celebrated Passover, the resurrection. What should be our preoccupation? It says here in, um, in this slide, who wants to read this slide? I'll read it. Okay. The little scriptures on there. Yeah. 
Verse 18, it looks like, and Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Amen. So here's, here's the thing. Jesus was walking. Um, I once asked Mormons why they ride their bikes. <laughs> and they told me it's because if they were in their car, they wouldn't be able to um, um, meet people. So Jesus could have been on a horse. He could have been on a donkey, but he wanted to walk around and that's how we meet people and he would have the divine encounters it says there he saw um um he saw two brothers so here we've been um what god will do sometimes is he will highlight people to you you could see somebody and all of a sudden you feel drawn to them or you'll feel like You've known them forever. You ever had that experience where people will come up to you and be like, do I know you from somewhere? And if that's happening, know that the Holy Spirit's involved with that. And then, then start following that leading because that's what the Holy Spirit will use. He will use something like that. Like, do I know you? Or there's this, like, you feel like you've known that person. And um, so God will use that. And what does he say to them? He said, follow me. Jesus said, follow me. Now, what I find very, uh, I would just say alarming would be the word, is that a lot of people are following who they think is Jesus, but they're not like Jesus at all. Um, they follow people on YouTube. But they don't have the character of Jesus. They don't have the heart of Jesus. And so therefore, you're, it's not following Jesus. They may say they're a Christian. They may be say they're a preacher. They may whatever. But they don't follow Jesus. They don't follow Jesus' ways, his methods, his, his message, his ministry, they, his motive. Therefore, they're not following Jesus. You can say you follow Jesus all you want. But if you're not doing things the way Jesus does them, then are you really following him? And I could say, no, you're not following him. But Jesus didn't give these um, elaborate motivational speeches and made people feel comfortable in their sin. Jesus didn't do anything like that. you you got to really question, are those people doing things the way Jesus did them? That's what we got we to gotta ask ourselves. And of course, we're all in a process and we're learning, we're growing. And nobody's perfect. And please don't try to find a perfect person because you're not going to find one. Uh, but what you need to have to look for is somebody who, who is intentionally following Jesus the best they know how. That's what we need to look for. Especially if we're looking for someone to disciple us, we need to look for someone who's intentionally trying to follow Jesus and not have this own uh, agenda of, I'm going to do things my way. And so they immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers. Do you see how God kept showing him people? And then he, uh, he called them to follow himself right and god will do that he he's gonna highlight people to you on facebook on wherever social media he's gonna sh point people out to you and those are probably people that you're called to disciple this is how jesus did it he he saw people and 
he said, come on, let's, let's go on this journey together. Let's walk together. And, and, and that's what we need to do. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Discipleship and evangelism requires a very proactive approach. We need to instigate it. So if we're walking around, we need to say hello to people. I mean, it sounds so basic, but we need to notice people. We got to get out of our uh, comfort zone and, and say hi to people and, and, and smile. You would, I mean, smiles can go a long way, right? Okay. Who wants to read this next slide? Anybody want to read this next slide? Elizabeth? I can read it. Okay. I can read it. Okay. Um, Galilee, the rallying point after resurrection. Matthew 28, 5 through 7. But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go directly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Amen. Amen. So he started his ministry in Galilee. And now he's in Galilee, going to Galilee again to have like a rallying point after the resurrection. So let's see what happens next. Okay, so we already read that. We're going here. Oh, wait, I'm on the wrong slide. Okay, so who wants to read this next slide? Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Don't make me call on you people. <laughs> I'll read if no one else wants to. Okay, go ahead. Um, all right, here we go. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee mm -hmm. to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. Mm -hmm. they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came back and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. So he, he starts his ministry in Galilee and now he's ending his ministry in Galilee. And what is the, the last, these, so before you die, you want to say the most important things to the people you love, right? He already died, but now he's going to say the most important things to his disciples before he doesn't see them anymore. He wants to convey a message. His, yes. last, his last testament, his last words. And here it is. Look, guys, all authority has been given to me on heaven and earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Baptiz baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all the things I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So we got to go. We have to go. We have to be the ones that go. I mean, if we just do that, we're ahead of the game. We have to be the ones that go. And we have to make the disciples. God's not, this is not something that, um, what is a disciple? We're making fall, other people followers of Jesus. How are we doing that? We're, by teaching them. We have to teach them. We have to preach the gospel, we have to teach the word of God. We have to baptize them. 
we have to activate them and, and demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit. Right? Yeah. Amen. 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 Look at this. I, I want all of you to note this down, okay? Because this is the work of the Great Commission right here. If you can all write this down. We have to go. We have to make disciples. We have to baptize them and we have to teach them. This is for everybody. There is nobody and there shouldn't be anybody in church. And I'm not trying to be mean, but it's just that we got to get out of this mindset that we go to church to listen to sermons and then go home. Because churches should be equipping centers. We go to church to become a disciple so we can make disciples. Yep. Amen. So we got to go, therefore, make disciples of all nations and baptize them and teach them. And what do we teach them? We teach them what Jesus taught his disciples. Yeah. And sometimes we get off into all this crazy stuff that has nothing to do with the gospel and the angels and the vibrations and this and that. And we need to stick to the simplicity of the gospel because we've gotten way too complicated with it. Did everybody write this down? I took a picture. Okay, yeah, I could take a like a snapshot of it or whatever. Yeah. That'd be good. Or I could also, also send this, just this snippet. Okay? I wrote it down. Okay. I'm old-fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to make disciples or followers of Jesus by teaching them. Okay. So we walk, we go. We walk, go from place to place, city to city, park to park. We open our eyes to see folks. We speak to them. We call them. We greet them. It says demand on them, but we, we have to take that proactive approach. Can't make disciples sitting at home watching TV. Ain't going to happen. Right? We got to go say hi to people at the store, say hi to people at the gas station, you know, and we, and we can get so in our little space, in our little comfort zone, that we never talk to nobody. And we can't live like that. We can't be like that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so the next uh, thing we need to do here, let me get to this slide. It says in Acts 1 1, Jesus did and taught. It says, The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. So, like I was saying, Jesus taught his disciples by example. He didn't just tell them to do this, he actually taught by example. Mm -hmm. so what does teaching them entail? How do you teach them? What do they do with the teaching? Okay. It says here, Matthew 28, 20. Teaching them to observe. That means they're observing you. All things that I've commanded you. So we're the ones they have to see. If you're going to teach somebody to heal the sick, Go take them out in the streets and go heal the sick right in front of them so they can see how it's done. Don't just give them a class about it. Go take them out. Pastors, ministers, anybody who's going to be watching this video, take your people out. Take them out. Get them off the pews. <laughs> We got to get off the pews. We got to get out of the four walls, right? Yes. Amen. It says here, Jesus taught the disciples from his father's instructions. I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the father who sent me. 
This is the attitude we need to have as disciples. I can't do this without him. As I hear, I'm going to discern. I don't seek my own will. I don't seek to do what I want. How about we wake up in the morning and say, not my will, but your will be done today. How's about yeah. we commit every day to him and say, Father, give us divine encounters. Give us strategies. Help us help other people, et cetera, and so on. And we live that surrendered life. Amen? Yes. Okay, here we go. Next one. So Jesus is saying, teach them everything I commanded you. Jesus is saying, teach them my words. Teach them what I've taught you to do. Teach them what I've commanded you. Jesus begins teaching in Matthew 5 through 7. He starts in, he starts in Matthew 5. And he ends the sermon in seven. Okay, Matthew. Just teach. Just if you taught people from Matthew 5 to 7, Jesus said after he got done teaching all that, he said, if anyone builds their life on these sayings or teachings, let's actually try to go there right now. Verse 26. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, when he, he compares it. Yeah. You want me to read it in Matthew yes. 7, 24? If it, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts yeah. upon them yeah. may be compared to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. Mm -hmm. And the rain descended, and the floods came, the winds blew and burst against that house, yet it did not fall, for it, it had been founded upon the rock or on Jesus. Right. Anyone who hears these words and does not act on them is like a foolish man who building his house on the sand. The rain came, the floods came, the winds blew, burst against the house. It fell, and great was its fall. So what's the difference between the person who built the house on the rock and the person that didn't? They acted on the words that they learned from Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> they were a doer of the word. Yeah. And because they became a doer of the word, it brought strength in their life, and they were able to withstand any storm. That's what, that was the difference. If you don't do what you, you read in the Bible, you're, you're going to get pummeled by the enemy. And you're going to fall off the rock and, and, and get tossed in that ocean. And we don't want that for you. If you're struggling, and this is my call out to anyone who watches this video afterwards. Please go to somebody and get help. Okay. Now I've been very busy with my dad being sick and he's dying and all that, but I'm getting back on track here and we're going to start assigning battle buddies. So I'm, I'm going to be assigning people that you can disciple. So if you want to be a disciple and you're watching this video, please contact me and I'll hook you up with somebody. Or if you want to disciple somebody you never have and you want to learn how, contact me. However, here's my however. What I read in John chapter 15, you need to be, I'm not asking you to be perfect because you're not going to be perfect. But I'm asking you to be a surrendered person. If you're going to disciple somebody, you want to make sure that you're on, standing on the rock and that you're a doer of the word. There's no hidden sin, no compromise, no active practice, lifestyle sin, no, no double-mindedness. Because if you're not standing on the rock, the person you're bringing to disciple, they're going to fall off that rock with you. And I don't want that. So we want to make sure that each person is strong. And we want to be able to cultivate every gift. We want to make sure we know your calling. And we want to uh, make sure, yeah, the body of Christ is connected and strong. Because we're, strong we're stronger together. If you're out there alone and you're, you're this rogue agent for Jesus, look, can't live like that. I lived like that for years and it was the worst mistake of my life. 
It's when I got into an accountable relationships and submitted in, into relationships, godly relationships that you're going to flourish. And so that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> um, here, we, how do we do? How do you teach them? We teach others by doing, leading by example, doing and being a true example. Indeed, seems the most impactful teaching and approach of all that Jesus began to do and teach. You can't teach people things that you're not living. You gotta, you gotta live out your walk with God. You gotta have integrity. You have to have character because mm -hmm. people are watching you. You think people aren't watching you, people are watching you, okay? And they are watching you. And, and I'm gonna tell you, if you're gonna be a, someone who disciples others, you're gonna have to pray a lot for those mm -hmm. people. A lot. Mm -hmm. Maybe, a, and Paul did it. He did it. He he always said this, and I'm going to find a verse. Praying, I'm praying always. And he said, he would say that. He was always praying for people. Maybe Bob can beat me to the, to the a verse, but I'm going to take Ephesians, for instance, the letter of Ephesians. You pray, pray the word over people. Let me see here. I'm trying to find a where he's saying he's praying for people all the time. Yeah, um, that should be all over the place in his letters. <laughs> is I'm praying for all of you. But I'm trying to find an actual verse. Right. Oh, here it is. In verse 16 of Ephesians 1:16. It says, cease not to give thanks for you and making mention of you in my prayers. If you're going to disciple other people, he says he ceases not from praying for people. You're going to have to be a prayer warrior and not be judgmental and not be opinionated and not, um, you know, be, be grant people the mercy and grace that God uh, granted you not excusing sin I'm not saying that but if people fall down oh. just tell them to get up keep running help them up don't don't kick them when they're down I, I mean the the body of Christ is very guilty of doing that and and it needs to stop we're not we're not here to judge one another like that um, and kick people when they're down when they're trying and they fell down like, pick them up. Don't criticize people. Just pick them up and say, okay, you can do this. Keep running, brother and sister. That's out there watching this. <laughs> so what do you do? Jesus led throughout by examples, teaching through his life and ministry work, preaching everywhere he went, teaching everywhere, and doing miracles, demonstrating by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now... Um, let's see here the next slide discipleship we need to have a discipleship we're forming a discipleship network we're going to call battle buddies <laughs> we, what I expect the people who are discipling others is a weekly contact to see how the other person is doing counsel share from God's word no opinions or YouTube videos don't be sending people YouTube videos Send them the word of God. All right. And people know that if you know this about me, you ask me a question, I'm going to send you the word. My opinion does not matter. <laughs> we got to pray for the other person. We need to be a safe place to keep things confidential. We have to be a listen. We have to be good at listening and we have to speak the truth in love. And this is what I would expect from anyone who's discipling others now. We're not always going to be perfect, and we're not. But this should be how we disciple other people. These should be some of the things we do. Okay. Could I share one thing on the notes? Sure. When it says uh, be a safe place to keep things confidential, I several years back, I was 
had an accountability partner and I did not realize that this person for whatever reason did not keep anything confidential that we shared between each other. He shared it openly with other people. What I was, what was supposed to be confidential and that was really a bad thing. Yes. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. You gotta keep it confidential. Yeah. Between yeah. you and the person you're talking with that you're discipling that you're praying with it's just between you and that person no one else it doesn't go outside of that mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. the person has to know that that's being honored right so. yeah yeah so who who um is there anything i could add to this list you think and i could add it wiki contacts to see how the person is doing console or share from god's word Pray for the other person. Um, be as, how long, uh, what would you recommend our time span together? Um, well, I, I think that would depend on, on your, your time. Um, you could do anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. That's what I thought. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. So I could put time. Or, yeah, 45 an hour, you're right. From, yeah. Because it goes so fast. Time goes so fast. But yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. That would be, if you could do that once a week, that would probably be good. Mm hmm Yeah. So what do they do with the teaching? They observe it, they obey and grow with it, and commit it unto others, disciple others. So um, they have to observe, obey, grow with it, commit it unto others. That's what we need to do with the teaching. So who wants to read 2 Timothy 2.2? Well, I'll read it if no one wants to. <laughs> okay, God wants a chain production of disciples. You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. Amen. Okay, so we need a, the summary of the message is teach others, teach by doing, be a true example, teach directly, encourage disciples to observe the teaching and grow, and disciple others. Okay. <laughs>